Hello everyone, I hope you're doing well. Now that I've finished with my character's textures, I want to make a short rendered video to show them off at every angle, like the video you see playing right now. So to do that, I'm going to show you how to set up a camera and render settings, how to create a turnaround animation, how to render it frame by frame in Arnold, and how to compile all of the frames into a movie file in Adobe Media Encoder. I've previously covered lighting and materials before, so I've gone ahead and set up those parts of the scene already, as well as adding a little dies for her to stand on. Real quick though, all I've done is add an AI sky dome light with a dark blue color for a subtle ambient light, as well as these three spotlights pointed at my character for three point lighting. My key light here is warm, while my fill light and my backlight are both cool, just to add a bit of contrast. So the first thing I'm gonna do is set up a camera that I want to render from. So one of the easiest ways to set up a camera right away is I can go up to view and select create camera from view. And if you'll notice that created a camera here in my outliner, and I can also tell that I'm in a new camera called Persp1 by looking down here at the bottom of my viewport. I'm then gonna go ahead and change the name of my camera to render cam. I'm going to turn on my resolution gate by pressing this button right here at the top of my viewport. And what this does is it shows me the exact boundaries of my frame. And then I'm just going to adjust my camera around so that I can get her right in the center. And then once I'm happy with that position, I'm going to lock my camera with this button right here at the top of my viewport. And once I've done that, I can no longer change the position of my camera by trying to navigate normally. Now notice when I turned on the resolution gate, these two numbers appeared up here. This is the resolution that my renders will come out to. So currently I will be rendering 960 by 540 size images, and that's a little bit small. So I want to go into the render settings and make that a larger number among other things that I want to change. So I'm going to go up here to the clipboard with a gearbox button to open up my render settings. I'm gonna scroll down to the bottom of the common tab until I get to image size. And there's a couple different options to be really specific with my image size, but I'm just gonna go into presets, open that up. And I'm gonna go down to HD 1080. So now we'll be rendering at a size of 1920 by 1080 pixels. Next up, I'm gonna scroll back up to the top of the common tab here in render settings. And we're just going to go down the list here of settings that I want to change to render a sequence of images. So first, the file name prefix. By default, Maya is going to save my images out as just whatever my scene name is. But my scene name is pretty long, so I want to just shorten that to turn around frame. Then just below the file name prefix is the image format. And by default, it saves as XERs, which are fine. That's a valid type of image, but it's a pretty large file size. EXRs are great if you want to do some post render compositing effects. But for our purposes, I'm going to change this to PNG. Moving down a little bit further, we have frame slash animation extension. So this option determines the naming convention that Maya will automatically save your frames as. So it will, by default, save a name and then the extension, which right now is PNG. However, you see right here it says single frame in parentheses. That's because Maya doesn't know by default where to put a number for each frame in your animation. So I'm going to open this up and I'm going to instead select name.poundsign.ext. And the pound sign in this instance is the number of each frame. And when I did that, that actually allowed me to now set a start and end frame for my render as well. So when you go to render a sequence of images, Maya will render from the start frame to the end frame. Now, I know ahead of time that I want my animation to be four seconds, which is 96 frames total. So I'm going to set my end frame to 96. And then going down a little bit further, there are options to set a renderable camera. And right away, it has both my render cam and my perspective cam in there. And so that's fine. So long as your render cam is in here, then you'll be good. Next up, I'm going to go to the Arnold Renderer tab in my render settings and open that up. 
And I've already gone ahead and set the sampling numbers that I want for this. I've covered sampling before, so I'm not going to get too into it. But basically, the higher these numbers are, the higher quality and less grainy your images will be. I've gone ahead and tested out different settings here. And I found that the numbers I want are camera AA to 4, diffuse to 3, specular to 3, transmission to 2, a subsurface scattering to 3, and volume indirect to 2. I could set these higher if I wanted, but if I were to set them higher, my renders would take even longer. I can, of course, test to see how long my render will take with these settings this way by going to Arnold up here in the main menus and then going to Render. And it'll open this pop-up with the Arnold render view. If your camera is not switching to the render cam by default, go ahead and open up this dropdown and you can select your cameras from here. Now, when I render an image, once it's done, I can see the time it took to render that image down here in the bottom left corner of the Arnold render view. So this image took five seconds to complete rendering, which means it will take 480 seconds approximately to finish rendering every frame or eight minutes. But if I just were to turn up the camera AA up to something like nine, let me let it render. It takes much longer. So with camera AA at 9, it took 29 seconds, which if I multiply it by 96, would be 46 minutes, approximately. So the sampling is very important to test out and get a good balance between quality and fast rendering, because it's going to be multiplied by however long your animation is. Next, let's talk about how to set up a simple animation for our character turning around in place. So I'm going to close my Arnold render view. I'm going to close my render settings. If you haven't already, go ahead and place all of your character geometry into a group by just selecting it all in the outliner and then pressing Control G. Let's call this character group. And then after that, I want to make sure that I'm on frame one. I can do that by going to it down here in the time slider. And then with my group selected, I want to go over here to the channel box. And on the Rotate Y channel, I want to right click it and select Key Selected. This will add a keyframe to my character group on the Rotate Y axis on frame one. And you can see now there's a little red line here on the time slider, which indicates that there's a keyframe on that frame. Next, I want to set the length of this animation in my scene. Before we set the length of the render sequence, but that's a little bit different than the actual length of the animation in the scene. So to do that, I'm going to go over here to these two boxes underneath my time slider. And the box here on the right is the total length of the animation. So I'm going to set that to 96. And then this box is the playback range. So when I press play, my animation will go up to frame 76 and then go back to frame 1. So I just want to see the whole animation. So I can either drag this out to expand my range, or I could just type in the number I want here. After that, I want to go over here to the very bottom right, and I want to click this button here that looks like a plus sign with two arrows encircling it. This button is to turn on and off auto keyframe. So when I turn it on, it turns red, and now every time I make a change, to a, a channel that has a keyframe on it, Maya will automatically add a new keyframe with that new value at the frame you're on. If you're already on a frame with a keyframe, then it'll also just change the value of that keyframe. So now with all that set up, I'm gonna go all the way to the end at frame 96. And under rotate Y, I'm just gonna type in 360. And with that, my character will now rotate in a full circle. So if I hit play, it should work right, except it's going a little bit faster than I would anticipate. This is because there's one more little settings that we have to change in Maya before it'll play correctly. So right next to where we turned on auto keyframe, I'm gonna press this button of the little running man with a gearbox to open the animation preferences. And in here, there's an option to change the playback speed. And you can see right here, it's set to play every frame. What that means is Maya is going to play every frame as fast as possible. It's odd. I'm not really sure why it's set this way, because 
it's not very convenient. Instead, we want to set this to at 24 FPS times one. That means that it will actually play 24 frames per second at a reliable pace. If I want to change my animation set frames per second, I can go up here to frame rate and I could select something new like 30. And that changes the option down here to 30 FPS times one. But I'm just going to leave this at 24 frames. And then hit save and it'll close it. Once I've done that, I'll hit play. And she now rotates around smoothly. So this is working out really well, except there's one more thing I want to change. Currently the animation eases in and out of the movement and you can see at the start and end of the animation, the rotation stops. Whereas I want this video to be able to loop multiple times. So I want the speed to remain consistent from loop to loop. To fix this, we're going to adjust the animations curves in the graph editor. To access the graph editor, I'm going to go up here to Windows, Animation Editors, Graph Editor. In the graph editor, once I have my character group selected, you can see that my two keyframes are represented in the graph as points from left to right. And the value of each keyframe is represented by their vertical position. Not only are the keyframes here, but we can also see this line being drawn between the two keyframes, which represents the progression of the value as it rises from 0 to 360. So if we change the curve, it will affect the speed at which we go from 0 to 360. And so if we do something different like this, and then we hit play, you can see because the curve actually now goes above 360, she overshoots the 360 mark and then rotates back into place. So there's all kinds of crazy things that can be done with these curves to tweak your animations. But all we really want to do is make it go straight from 0 to 360 at the same consistent speed for every frame. So to do that, I'm going to select both frames. And here are different options to change the tangents, which are just the little handles that appear on each frame when you select them. And this one right here, linear tangents, it's a diagonal line with a single keyframe. When I click it, it'll cause the tangents of each keyframe to point directly at the next keyframe. So now when I press play, she rotates at the same speed throughout the whole animation. Now, actually, there are two frames where she is essentially at the same position. So you can see there's a little stutter there. So I can resolve that by actually changing my animation length from 96 to 95 to cut off the last frame where she reaches the position 360. And then I'm just going to go back into my render settings and do the same thing here as well. And now the rotation is seamless. So with all that done, all that's left is to save this, bring up to file, increment and save, and then I just have to render this. Now before we were rendering single images, we were going to the all rental view and going to file, save image, etc, etc. But that's not very practical when we need to render 95 of these frames in quick succession. So instead, we're going to set up Maya to do a render sequence. To do a render sequence, go up to this drop down just under the main menu buttons. We're going to switch from the modeling menus to the rendering menus. And you'll see up here, all of the menus past windows have changed to new options. And then from here, I'm going to go to render, render sequence, and I'm not going to select the render sequence option. I'm instead going to select the little box next to it to open the options for render sequence. This is very important because if you don't do this, 
my will sometimes default to your perspective camera and it'll re not render from the perspective that you want. So I want to render this from my render cam. And then if I wanted to, I could also set an alternate output file location. But if I don't put anything here, my will save these images by default to your images folder in your project folder. So long as you have properly set your project. Then once that's set up, go ahead and hit render sequence and close. When you do that, this pop-up will appear here and will show each of your frames rendering in quick succession. And you also see a little progress bar down here to show the progress of each frame as it renders. Once you've done that, just go ahead and leave it alone until it's done rendering. Once Maya is done rendering all of your frames, it's time to throw it into Adobe Media Encoder to turn it into a movie file. So I'm going to go into my character project folder and we go into images and render cam and just review my frames real quick. Looks like they're all here. I'm then going to copy the destination of this folder by selecting it and copying it with right click. And I can close that. And then I'm going to open up Adobe Media Encoder. And what Adobe Media Encoder is for is exporting videos in different formats. So one of the really clear examples is you can export your videos in formats that are ideal for different social media platforms like YouTube or Vimeo or Twitter. Or if you have a video, you could export it as a PNG sequence instead. But we're going to do the opposite. We're going to take a PNG sequence and turn it into a video. So to do that, I'm going to go up here under Q. I'm going to click this plus sign. And up here in the address bar, I'm going to paste my render cam export destination. And then I'm just going to click the first frame. And you'll see down here, there's a checkbox that says PNG file sequence. So as long as this is checked, it'll understand that this frame is part of the sequence and it'll import all of the frames in as, as one sequence. So I'm gonna hit open. And it appears right here in the queue. And by default, it will export as a pretty standard MP4 file. However, the default mode is going to be a pretty large file. So oftentimes what I like to do to keep file sizes small for sharing online, I will just scroll down to the YouTube 1080p full HD template. I'll click it and I'll drag it right here to my sequence. And then by default, your video will export to whatever folder you sourced the images from. So I just hit play. It'll export the video. And then my video appears right here. Then I'll open it up. And there's my video. So there you have it. All the steps you need to show off your beautiful textures with high quality lighting and rendering. And with that, I wish you good luck and I hope you have a good one.